Hello everyone and welcome to this guide to crafting all the satchels in Red Dead Redemption 2 up to and including the Legend of the East satchel. To start with, is it worth it? If you are aiming to complete the game to 100% then my advice is to set out and craft the Legend of the East satchel as early as possible. It will probably take you a couple of hours to collect all the pelts you require. However, in terms of the times it will save you for completing the challenges and not having to worry about storage space for all the items you pick up, it will pay dividends in the long run, bearing in mind that reaching 100% will likely take you well over 100 hours in total. Satchels can be crafted by Pearson at your camp from chapter 2 onwards. You'll need to bring him perfect quality pelts for 21 animals in total but we'll get to that in a bit. First you will need to perform various tasks to unlock the ability for him to craft satchels for you. Some of these can be completed from the beginning of chapter 2, others will only be possible after you have progressed through some of the story missions. One of the first things you can do is a requirement to unlock the crafting of the material satchel. This can be done by crafting three recipes of any kind at the scout fire found at the gang's camp. Note the gang actually has two fires and it's the smaller one at the fringe of their base not the larger one members sit around to chat and sing songs at. Crafting three recipes can in fact be the first thing you do in chapter two. Hosea will give you the ingredients necessary to craft potent health cures in the mission Eastward Bound at the end of chapter one. The other task you can begin is donating five carcasses to Pearson at camp, which is a requirement to unlock the ingredient satchel. Note you have to donate the full animal or its skin carcass. The pelt or the meat on its own will not suffice. This ties in nicely with the early Master Hunter challenges 1 and 2, where you have to get three deer and three rabbits respectively. Simply hand the carcass and pelts if they're in perfect condition. If you don't get enough, however, the hunting you need to do later in this guide will help finish it off for you. To unlock the kit satchel, you will need to donate three valuables into the tithing box at the camp. You should have looted plenty of items in Chapter 1 already during the missions Old Friends and Who the Hell is Leviticus Cornwall. Things like belt clasps, rings or watches of any type will work fine for this. Similarly, to unlock the valuable satchel you must donate $50 in cash into the tithing box. This might take you a bit longer to get enough surplus funds that you are happy to part with, but you should accumulate this um, reasonably quickly after a few missions in Chapter 2. The linked 100% guide will also show you how to get three gold bars early on in the story, which will give an ample boost to your wealth. The remaining requirements can only be met once you have done the missions in Chapter 2, Money Lending and Other Sins 1 and 2 for Leopold Strauss at the camp. After you've returned the first of his debts back to the tithing box, the ledger is unlocked, which allows you to purchase upgrades at the camp. The next three requirements all need to be bought from the ledger, which is found next to the tithing box by Dutch's tent. With the ledger unlocked, pay to upgrade the medicine wagon twice, as this is a requirement to craft the tonic satchel. Similarly, you must upgrade the provision wagon twice, as this is one of the requirements to craft the provision satchel. Finally, you must also purchase the leather working tools for Pearson, also from the ledger, in order to craft any of the satchels. For the last three purchases, your camp must of course have sufficient funds 
Fortunately, the valuables and cash you put in the tithing box earlier for the kit and va valuables satchel will have helped with this, but be aware you may need to put in more. Again, if you follow the linked 100% guide, this will show you how to get gold bars from completing one of the treasure hunter challenges early in the chapter, which should give you sufficient funds to do so. There are no additional requirements to unlock the crafting of the Legend of the East satchel, only that you must have crafted all the other satchels already. That is the easy part. More tricky is obtaining perfect pelts for specific animals and donating them to Pearson for crafting at the camp. Getting perfect pelts, however, can be a pain. Generally, you'll need to find three star animals, use the right weapon and hit them once in the right area. If you mess any of these up, you'll end up with a good or poor quality pelt which is useless. It must be graded as perfect for use in crafting. One thing that helps massively therefore is if you first hunt the legendary buck which can be found in Blackbone Forest west of Strawberry in Big, Big Valley. You can then craft the buck and the trinket at any fence, the nearest one being in Rhodes, which will increase the chance you come away with a perfect pelt. This will also be useful for several other hunting tasks later on in the game, so it is definitely worth you getting this. As with other legendary animals, this is available after completing the story mission Exit Pursued by a Bruised Ego, where you hunt the bear with Hosea early in Chapter 2. You're then ready to go hunting, and the playlist linked in the description will provide videos showing you every perfect pelt type you need to get, where to find the animal, and what weapon to use. Without going into all the detail, the rest of the video will now give you an overview of what is required. To craft all the satchels, you are going to need perfect pelts for the following animals. You may be able to find them at multiple locations across the map, but the areas shown are the places where I've had the best success rate at finding them. You will need the following perfect pelts. A panther, an iguana, a boar, a raccoon, a squirrel, a badger, a beaver, a cougar, a buck, a bison, a wolf, a rabbit, two elk, and seven deer. If you concentrate on these areas, you will be able to find everything you need in three counties, Scarlet Meadows, Big Valley, and the Heartlands near to your camp. This will enable you to get all the required pelts in two to three trips to each location. Keep in mind that the wolf, the raccoon, and the badger have better spawn probabilities at night time, so sleep to advance game time if necessary. You'll need two elk, and it has a bigger pelt, so you can only transport one at a time. However, you'll need a lot of deer, so travelling back and forth isn't such a bad thing. Whilst the cougar, beaver, iguana and panther spawn in very specific places as shown, you can simply keep your eye open for any deer as you travel back and forth between your camp to these locations rather than seeking them out specifically as they will spawn across the map. The same goes for the rabbit and the squirrel which can pop up in lots of places, not just the high probability locations shown. Simply keep your eyes open and you should come across them when hunting the other animals. The bison can be quite hard to find in free roam as the herd can show up anywhere in the heartlands, but is surprisingly elusive. 
However, in Chapter 2, there is a camp companion activity to go hunting with Charles Smith that will pretty much guarantee you a perfect bison pelt if you use the Springfield rifle and score a headshot. So this is definitely your best way to get one. Whilst a perfect wolf pelt is not too difficult to find, the Stranger mission Arcadia for Amateurs 2 is ideal, since you are guaranteed to get five of them to spawn. If you hit them with the Springfield rifle in the head, you may well walk away with five perfect specimens, with the surplus being usable for aesthetic camp upgrades as well. The videos in the playlist linked in the description will show you in more detail where precisely to find each animal and which weapon to use. However, before we finish, there are some general tips regarding preparation and in hunting them. Before you start, you should buy a varmint rifle and a Springfield rifle if you don't already own them. The varmint rifle is the best weapon to use for the raccoon the badger, the rabbit, the iguana and the beaver. Whilst the Springfield rifle is the best weapon for the bison, the wolf, the cougar and the panther. The deer, the buck, the elk and the boar should all be lassoed and killed with your knife. Finally, the squirrel should be killed with a small game arrow. Small game arrows are easy to craft. You will simply need some shotgun shells, some normal arrows, both of which can be bought from any gun store, and some flight feathers, which you can easily acquire by shooting any birds you see flying in the sky and plucking them for the feathers. When hunting, you should first aim to study the target animal with your binoculars. Afterwards, if you point a rifle at the animal, it will be identified as one, two or three stars. Don't waste your time going for it unless it is a three star animal. You should also keep in mind that when crafting the Legend of the East satchel you can also combine this efficiently with some of the Master Hunter challenges. You should ideally complete Master Hunter challenges 1-2 before you start searching for the other animals in full as these require you to skin three deer and three rabbits respectively. Handing these pelts to Pearson will give you a good head start. Then Master Hunter Challenge 3 requires you to track 10 species of animals with your binoculars, so you might as well do this when hunting the ones you need for your satchel pelts. Master Hunter Challenge 4 is also one that can fit in nicely, where you have to call and get a clean kill on an animal 5 times. There are so many tasks to do in Red Dead Redemption 2, you will find it hugely beneficial if you can combine some of them simultaneously. Follow these guidelines and you'll have the Legend of the East satchel and more capacity to store items than you will ever realistically need, which will make the rest of your quest so much easier. If you found this guide helpful, you may want to check out the link in the description for a much bigger challenge completing the game to 100%.